In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how none other than millennial crypto mogul Ed Craven decided to indulge himself and splurge on a whopping $88 million mansion. Given the current market situation and companies having to lay off employees in the decentralized finance space, seeing someone from within this very space make such a purchase is definitely a jaw dropper. First off, the property acquisition. Ed Craven, a a millennial businessman broke the record for the most expensive home ever when he paid $88 million for a mansion in Melbourne that was once known as the Ghost House. The sale of the property at 2931 St. George's Road in Taruk, Victoria for the third highest price in Australian real estate history according to Nine was verified by officials in the space recently. This historic deal was brought to light as yet another Taruk mansion on the same street, too, which once threatened to break the Victorian price benchmark before this hushed contract finally came to light, went under offer for a ridiculous sum, which was understood to be more than a whopping $70 million. Craven, aged 26, the creator of the Bitcoin online casino Stake.com, bought the vacant 2931 St. George's Road in a secretive, off-market exchange, making it his second second million dollar home acquisition in the exclusive neighborhood this year alone. It was just recently that an offer was placed on Taruk's 17 St. George's Road, which had a price tag of $65 million to $70 million when it first went on the market last month. The vendors were reportedly represented in both St. George's Road transactions by Marshall White director Marcus Ciminello. The director chose not to comment on any element of either sale. Mike Cannon Brooks, the millionaire founder of the Atlassian software company, paid $100 million for the Sydney Trophy property Fairwater in Point Piper, setting a new record for the country. John Lee, the head of mining, paid $95 million for Edgewater, also in Point Piper. The third and fourth places are now held by the St. George's Road properties. Secondly, 30 years later, property tycoon David Yu, the seller of 2931 St. George's Road, owned the posh but empty house for more than 30 years. According to price finder information, the French Renaissance-style estate on a 7,113 square meter block was purchased for $5 million in 1991 by Yu's company, Ozvest Holdings, of which he is a director. In 2017, Domain said that 2931 St. George's Road was an unfair finished mansion with as many as 19 bedrooms that was accumulating cobwebs and making it look as if it was a ghost house on a potch street. The land was refused permission to be developed, and no real estate agent could persuade you to sell it for quite some time, too. Before now, that is, in March, Craven spent $38 million on his first Taruk mansion, which he purchased from another real estate tycoon, this time William Deeg, the president and chief executive of the Deeg Group. Stake.com, a project of Craven, is thought to be the biggest cryptocurrency gambling website in the world. So purchases like these don't seem all that far-fetched if you think about it. The Malvern home Stonington, which changed hands back in 2017, was purchased for $52.5 million, breaking the previous Victorian price record. One of Melbourne's poshest neighborhoods is St. George's Road in Taruk. Between Taruk Road main thoroughfare and the Yarra River. A lush street is lined with mansions of massive scale and elegant construction. Next up, a strategic partnership. In a multi-year partnership, Stake News will be the club's new main sponsor, supporting the Mumbai-based team's first team match and training uniforms in 2022 to 23. And possibly even beyond that, Stake News will also be available at the team's practice facility and on game days as well. Fans will be able to follow team developments on the Operators Indian website as part of the Operators integration into the club's digital communication. The cryptocurrency casino brand Stake.com shares branding with Stake News. With a few exceptions, internet sports betting is largely illegal in India, and companies that offer it aren't allowed to sponsor football teams. Stake.com has sponsorship agreements with the UFC, the English football club's Everton 
Anderson, and Watford, and Canadian musician and performer Drake. The CEO of Mumbai City FC, Kandarb Chandra, expressed the club's happiness at the partnership with Stake News. He said that over the past few years, the club's priority has been to physically and virtually connect the club's supporters. Next up, a change of pace for fans. With fans returning to the stadiums for the first time in about two years, Stake News' backing will supposedly help them emphasize their intention to interact with them both outside and online. He went on to say that he'd like to thank Stake News on behalf of Mumbai City and that he looks forward to developing a fruitful partnership with their new primary partner. Later, Stake News even expressed their own feelings, saying that they're thrilled that Mumbai City FC has brought them on as their major partner for the upcoming season. According to Akhil Sarin, who's the director of acquisition at Stake News, Sarin went on to say that he's excited to see their logo on the shirt and has completely embraced the club's aspirations for growth. He went on to stress the importance of the collaboration towards the company's brand strategy, saying that this cooperation will allow Stake to offer insightful news and drive key exposure within the global sports market, giving them the chance to establish a community of sports lovers in India. Coming up, Twitch has got a stake in gambling. Slots are currently the sixth most popular type of content on Switch. Surpassing even the likes of Fortnite, numerous streamers receive considerable payouts to engage in it too. One well-known streamer claims to make far more than $1 million per month from his sponsorship with Stake to engage in live crypto betting on Twitch. Leng Yell claimed to have been able to produce $119 million in wagers for Stake as of May 2022, according to multiple reports earlier this year. Leng Yell has since claimed on live streams that the $119 million amount was the total amount of money he had personally bet on the website at the time. The number couldn't unfortunately be verified by news sources, who had attempted to verify it with Stake either. Stake's one of the major companies giving the Twitch community sponsorship money, claiming to operate under a special license in Curacao. On Google Earth, the address Stake lists for its Curacao registration looks like a shabby cabin. According to the corporation, the majority of its employees are based in Europe. According to Frank DiGiacomo, a lawyer who oversees the gaming law group at Philadelphia-based Dwayne Morris LLP, crypto gambling is prohibited in the US, even though it's lawful in other nations. Some streamers may have even relocated to Canada because of how accommodating the country has been to cryptocurrency operators. Other news. First off, how's the metaverse hanging? By a thread, it seems like it. Not very long ago, Mark Zuckerberg provided us with an intro to the opportunities present in the realm now known as the metaverse. We've come a long way since many people now see opportunities opportunities for development, promotion, and even simply pure financial gain. We can say confidently that, regardless of how horrible the market is right now, Meta isn't showing any indications of withdrawing from it in light of recent developments. Hopefully, there's a bit of recovery because the metaverse is truly the future of the internet and a fantastic concept if nailed to perfection. Coming up, Doge 2? According to Michi Lumen, the project's lead developer, a C library produced by the Dogecoin Foundation using the alternative currency's own building blocks has been made available. With the help of this C library, developers may easily and directly integrate the coin into a number of platforms without having to have a thorough understanding of blockchain technology. In order to enable anyone to develop a Doge compliant product, Lib Dogecoin plans to provide a complete implementation of the coin's protocols as a C library. As a result, Lib Dogecoin v0.1 is still only a library and cannot technically run a node. The acceptance that followed the integration serves as a reminder of the foundation's primary utility-focused strategy. Lastly, if Web3 is to survive, if Web3 is to develop into a general-purpose financial system, 
system or a comprehensive system for decentralized trust, it must have robust interfaces with the real world, its legal systems, and the operational economy. We certainly don't intend to disregard Web3 entirely either. This isn't meant to suggest that Web3 has no real potential outside of sheer financial speculation. Cryptocurrency is perfect for virtual-only goods that may be used and valued in a restricted setting, like a video game or the envisioned metaverse. We have to assume that none of this will be seen anytime soon, at least not in any format that would be appropriate, until we observe some significant changes in the industry. That's a wrap for this video. How do you feel about the property purchased by the crypto mogul? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.